at 90 years of age, Ed certainly enjoyed a long and, for the most part, happy life. And of course, here is where I insert the story that I'm sure Ginny must have told any number of times over the years. And I have told, I probably owe Ginny money because uh, I've never copyrighted it. <laughs> and never sent her a check. In fact, the other day I said I'd send her a check, buck fifty for every time I said it. When I, when I got here in 1995, uh, or, no, was it 95? I don't know, when you celebrated your 50th, so it was 18 years ago. And you do the math, 18 years ago, whatever that was. Uh, you were celebrating your 50th. And I happened to be the presider of that mass. And, and I just, really on the spur of the moment, I asked them, to what do you owe the longevity of your marriage? And she said, like that, didn't even think. He was a traveling salesman. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that broke everybody up. I was, I said, well, this is a story I gotta keep in my, in my journal because this is just too funny. And I have to tell the story over and over. I didn't, and I was reminded by Ginny when I came back in, in uh, seven years ago, six years ago, that it was this couple that I had done this to. I forgot who it was because, I mean, there were so many couples that I had asked that question to. And, and it was Ginny who just got kind of, when you came back in, in uh, 2007, that it was she and, and Ed that I had asked the question. And I said, well, I could probably owe you some money because I've been telling everybody this story. Every time it kind of comes up, I tell this story. And so I, that's 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 the one story that I certainly remember about, about this couple. Uh, but but um, Ed, it was a man filled with um, with love and humility. And I'm not going to go on and on about. It. I'm not going to make him a saint. I'm not going to give all his great deeds and all of that because I'm sure he'd be embarrassed. Uh, enough to say that he was a blessing to to this parish community and to anyone who hasn't had has known him because look all of you. You're all here. And that's really a tribute to him. So first, on behalf of Father Robert and Father Nelson, who are both away, um, Robert with his mother and Nelson, who knows where he is, um, and the parish community uh, here at uh, St. Patrick's, uh, we want to extend our sincere condolences to you, Jimmy, and to your family, and to the friends uh, of Ed Frank in this day. Uh, Ed was, was our friend, but, but more than that, he was, he was a pilgrim with us on the way, on the journey. Uh, a journey, and, 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 we, and we loved him because at 7.30 Mass, every Sunday, he'd be here as a minister of hospitality, and you'd see his smiling face, he'd welcome people to the parish, he was very involved, almost to the very end, with, um, with his ministry and with the Knights of Columbus, and I don't know who your red shirts are, but probably some of you. Um, and you probably related to the red hat ladies and the red red shirts, right? <laughs> So I was having a couple, and this, this kind of came back to me um, when I was thinking about uh, today. Um, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who was Jewish, and, and we were both lamenting, I guess the wine had run out because we had gotten very serious uh, about this subject. We were both lamenting the, kind of the, the, um, the growth of, 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 of rejection, this rejection of Ju Judeo-Christian values in the world. God, I sound like, I, was, I said, I sounded like my father. I said, he used to kind of talk about these things. And, and, and what the Blessed John Paul II used to call the, the, the culture of death. We I mean, kind of going bantering about, about this. And, and I recall, and I remember just kind of tossing out of a rhetorical question, I guess, you know, I had nothing else to say, so I said, I'll just kind of toss this out as a, as a question, not really looking for an answer. I said, how could so many people turn against, or be, uh, be against life, turn their backs against life. So I guess we were talking about life issues. And my friend, wise as he is, he's a very wise person, he replied, he answered the question. I wasn't really looking for an answer, but he gave me one. He said, because for them, now he's a Jewish person, right? because for them, this is all there is, this life. For them, there's nothing else. For them, life is an accident without any purpose. Without purpose. So they have no interest in anything but the here and now. 
and their own selfish needs. And he said, isn't that sad? And so you got to open up another bottle of wine for me to answer that question. <laughs> she said, that's just too serious. But no, isn't it sad? It is sad. It certainly is sad. And, and really, if that's how we live our lives, if people live their lives that way, no wonder there's so much depression and despair in this world. And how blessed we are as followers of Jesus Christ that we are full of hope because of what Jesus did for us, because of the life that we anticipate after this. St. Paul said to, to the Christians in Rome, he said this in his letter to the Christians in Rome, hope does not disappoint 